Hello everyone! Welcome to my next video. Today I'm going to show you a modification that I have not shown before. And let's look underneath my couch on the 24D floor plan. This is where my water pump sits. It sits underneath the couch. Normally the access panel would be over here. But this is the water pump location. Normally the water pump would be shifted to the right a little bit more. But what I have done here is I've installed an accumulator tank. There's many videos out there on the accumulator tank, but uh, let me go over a couple of items why the accumulator tank will help in this RV especially, or RVs like this, especially if you have a Truma Aquago water heater. Let's go over just quick of what I did. I shifted the water pump to the left a little bit. It just takes four screws at the four corners, shifted it over. That gave me enough space to set the water, the accumulator pump. It just has two screws right here. The water inlet was always left alone. It's connected to the water pump here. The outlet here would normally be connected to this white hose, but you remove it from the water pump and I made a basically a U-turn here. So the pump is going out make a u-turn and it goes into the accumulator tank I did this all with PEX thinking back at it I could have just done it with a flexible hose as long as I put a 90 degree piece here and I could have put a little flexible hose in here and finished it much quicker also would have probably made less noise because anytime you have a hard pipe fitting like this at the water pump it tends to vibrate but then it continues out out here and it goes into the motorhome. Let me go over uh, how it helps with this RV uh, specifically and it's going to be pretty much any RV. The accumulator tank inside has a little air bladder and then the other half holds water. So the air bladder is basically pressurized by whenever a water source comes in. It keeps pumping up that air bladder or pushing on that air bladder and then the water is on the other end and it shoots it back out. Probably didn't explain that the best, but it's basically a pressurized tank. Very small one. And let me show you uh, how it helps out. Let's go into the bathroom. Now in the bathroom, I have this faucet here. If you watch my uh, previous videos, I did a modification. You know, my faucet here has this little end that basically screws out. Some, uh, some faucets have that on the end, and some do not. So this one specifically, if you take it out, this is the aerator. You can just pop, pop it in and out. I switched out this aerator to a low flow aerator. And let's look at this together. So now when you turn on the water, I can stream it. I can stream it full blast, and you can see it how fast it's coming out. Then of course I can trickle it down really far. You see that? So now with the accumulator, you, uh, I don't know if you noticed the difference. I'm not on city water, I'm on pump only. And here's the pump is on, we're on, a, on our system here, but I'm only on the pump. And what you notice is that it's a steady stream. And normally without the accumulator pump, what would happen is that this would surge. It would be like fast water, slow water, fast water, slow water. And sometimes it would go so slow that you'd only get that little trickle that one line, it doesn't, it won't come out in a nice uh, pattern like this. That's what the accumulator uh, pump does. It gives you a nice, steady, slow, uh, slow water flow, and it helps keep that uh, aerator. Uh, I call it spread out like that. And it goes for the shower too. If we go over to the shower, again, if you saw my previous videos, you know I uh, switched out the shower head, this hose, and then of course added this low flow diverter. So let's first turn the water on. If I turn the water on, I have the diverter off all the way. And if I turn it on full blast, you can see the water come on pretty hard. And let's turn it down here. And you're gonna see it, I'm gonna really turn it down. And you see that steady stream of water? And you notice that it doesn't surge like uh, it normally would. Whenever the water pump kicks on and shuts off, this would normally surge. And when you have it really flowing super low like this, that the Truma uh, water heater doesn't like that 
very much and sometimes you'll get a hot and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold. Well this will give you a nice steady stream of water. I'll show you the uh, the accumulator in action or the pump. So if I turn it turn this back on, let's look at this. Now I'm going to turn it down as low. I won't say as low, but it's turned down pretty low. And let's go over to the pump. Now normally that pump would go on and off, on and off, on and off, and you're going to have to go by the sound. Okay, you notice that pump uh, came on, came on for a longer time. What it's doing is coming on and pressurizing this accumulator tank. And the accumulator tank has enough pressure built in and it's going to slowly release that pressure. And as the pressure drops, this water pump is going to fill this up. So this pressure out is constant. And with that constant, uh, normally the pump would be on, off, on, off, on, off, and that's why you get the surge. Well, now you get that steady flow, and we'll go back to that faucet. And remember how I uh, left it on? Well, there it is. You can see that same flow here. Do you see that? It's always just that steady flow. Because sometimes when you have it on really low, what these uh, fixtures have a tendency to do is just have that one little stream come out that corner. When that pressure drops enough, it can, it like never goes back unless if you turn the water on higher. I don't know if that makes sense, but um, anytime, you know, if you've actually used your RV in a, a dry camping or boondocking setup, you probably know what I'm talking about. But uh, if you haven't put in one of these uh, low flow aerators, I highly recommend it. I'll put a link uh, down below, but I highly recommend it. Let me go over the uh, next item with the Truma water, he uh, water heater. So if you've ever turned on your water let's say you turned it on like this and you didn't have that accumulator tank you're going to hear that pump cycle but also you're going to hear a clunking it's going to be like dun -dun, dun -dun, dun -dun. that if you have the truma water heater it is likely not coming from your water pump it's actually coming from your truma water heater so let's look here i've removed the uh, access panel already but underneath here i'm going to set the camera down but this is where i have the Truma water heater and if you can see my finger here this blue line right here this is the water in and I'm gonna go back to that faucet and I'm going to basically turn that faucet on and off on and off four times and listen for the sound you're going to hear a clunking sound I'm sure you could probably hear that, but basically when I turned the faucet on and off, on and off, I was doing this. I was simulating what the water pump was doing. Without that accumulator pump, when you just leave it in the on position, when that pump cycles on and off, on and off, on and off, you're going to hear a clunking associated with it. And you're going to think it's the actual water pump, but it is the actual through my water heater so inside here some uh, kind of component in here when the pressure changes and it can and it's just cold water it doesn't have to be hot water whenever that pressure changes there's a clunking sound and it comes from back here somewhere and I, I called Truma on that and their fix was putting a very low pressure reducer in here but the pressure reducer uh, the problem it caused was that your hot water basically get no hot water you get like a tiny little stream of uh, hot water I did not like it at all I took it out it made it uh, the hot water temperatures fluctuate drastically and that's definitely not a solution but now that that I have the accumulator only the first time I turn it on you'll hear the I call it the clunking and the rest uh, you won't hear it again so if that noise bothers you that's another reason to put that accumulator in but I think it, uh, if you're a dry camper or boondock these are essentials and you'll make your camping experience uh, much more enjoyable I'll go over some items that I think you should normally carry in your RV I've mentioned this in uh, previous videos too but I carry an extra water pump because if you're out traveling and this water pump goes out on you and you can't get to the nearest source of another water pump you know that could uh, pretty much uh, ruin your trip and uh, why ruin your trip over, I don't know, I think this is only like a $90 piece. So 
So I highly recommend keeping an extra water pump in your, uh, in your parts. The other thing I carry is some um, plumbing components. That way if you ever have a leak, so anytime you have a water outage, if you've ever had a water outage, it can just ruin your entire trip and make your RV almost unusable. Obviously the toilet, the sink, the shower. So these are the parts that I carry. Besides the water pump, I carry an extra small stick of uh, text tubing because most of the plumbing inside the RV is text tubing. And it doesn't matter which color, you know, if it was an emergency, I'd put in any color. The other thing is I specifically carry a small PEX cutter. It helps you cut straight edges a little bit better than trying to use, you know, a utility knife. And a very essential item here is the actual crimpers. So you want to uh, keep these uh, PEX crimpers that are made specifically for these kind of uh, PEX rings here. So of course you have to have an assortment of these rings. And also, you want to keep some of these in here. Same thing, they're, you know, they're just basically uh, band clamps and you can uh, tighten them with either a screwdriver or um, some kind of a small socket. But why you want these is in the motorhome besides PEX, or many motorhomes, besides PEX, what they also have are these white water hoses. And if you ever have to cut a factory end off, like here, this factory end is pressed on, uh, pressed on there, but if you ever had a leak or this piece went bad, you could literally cut the hose off, use, you know, in a bind, you could use a PEX fitting. This is not the uh, ideal fitting, but you could, you could use a PEX crimper and you really want to have one of these so pressure fits on there. So that's again, more if you're in a bind. Um, I know Winnebago uses the white hose with uh, these PEX connections throughout many places, but that's not an approved uh, assembly and you're likely to going to get a, a leak, water leak. So I would, in a pinch I would do it, but this will help out instead of just using the PEX rings only in that application. The other things I carry is very essential is these parts like this. I wish, uh, I need to get some more but these are the straight pieces. They basically have a thread on them. Everything is half inch, half inch in the PEX world. And you can see this would this piece would thread onto here. But you wanna have some of these, some with uh, 90 degrees. I don't have the 90 degree pieces, but I can make them from these PEX connections. So I have some 90 degrees, straight pieces, T's, but you can see it. And importantly here, this is what I have is a plug. So if you ever had a water leak, you can cut the, uh, cut the water line off to whatever it's leaking too, put this back on and all your other, at least all your other plumbing fixtures will work. You can cut it off, plug it, and whatever it was feeding, obviously that won't work anymore, but the system uh, could stay pressurized. Hopefully that makes sense, but these are uh, essential items I would definitely carry. I do have some of these uh, shark bite fittings here. These are not my favorite. I don't know if I'm gonna carry these anymore. I've, uh, I don't think I'd ever use them because I have enough PEX items, but in a really hard uh, place where you can't use these crimpers. If it's in a tight uh, spot, these would work in a pinch. So that's probably why I have it. Now I don't have any straight piece. Well, I do have a straight piece. I forgot when I opened this container, it went underneath the slide. So I need to make sure I grab that before I break the slide. But that's really it. You know, put the accumulator in, have some extra parts that will take care of your clunking noise at the through my water heater and most importantly it'll give you that nice stream of water at this faucet if you have these little aerators put in and at the shower and make that hot water consistent so you don't get that spike because the water is going pressure is going up and down that's it if you have any uh, questions or comments write them down below and i appreciate you uh, watching my videos make sure you hit the thumbs up subscribe and i'll see you on the next video I did forget to mention, if you see here, this is a screen door. I'll show you how to put this in. Now this, starting in 2020, Winnebago had a new door put in and they have a screen door that actually slides. And it's on little, string, uh, little strings. My screen door is off because it actually broke. You know, this, uh, if you have one of these, you know it's going to break. You can tell by sliding it back and forth. It's going, to, it's going to break eventually one day. And that has happened. So I'll show you what I'm doing temporarily to get a screen door in there. 
and I'll also show you how I repair that original screen door in the future. If you want to see that, make sure you stick around, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next video.